study of gearbox design for a conveyor system. My name is Adrian Sidinen. With me, I have Isaac Negron, Jose Perdomo, and we are Team 5. Our team's goal was to design a gearbox that will transmit four horsepower from 1,000 revolutions per minute input shaft to an output shaft of 40 revolutions per minute. We all would like to minimize the input and output shaft offset while accomplishing the smallest weight and volume possible that will allow us to have high precision and endure light shocks. A gearbox, commonly known as transmission, is a device that allows controlled power to come from the out, that comes from the input source to an output source. In our case, we'll be designing a parallel shaft speed reducer that will be applied to a conveyor belt system. A conveyor belt system is a mechanical device that allows material to be moved from one position to another. To design our gearbox, the catalog that was used was the KHK stock gears and SKF bearings. This was compared to the AGMA standards and procedures that was used to get a satisfactory factor of safety using the Shingley's Mechanical Engineering Design Book. For gear maintenance, lubrication is key. The National Lubrication and Grease Institute recommends grade one lubrication to be used for any gearbox ranging from 20 degrees to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. In our case, that's perfect because our operation standards are at room temperature. Also visual inspections for leaks and cracks and also misalignment with the gears should be looked at so we can have longer life of the gearbox system. Next, we have Jose to talk about our design alternatives. For the task provided, we came up with the following design alternatives. First of all, we have a idle gear set, um, which will give us a, the right rotation direction. However, this puts the input and output shaft at different offset, offsets and also pro uh, provides uh, great stress to the first and third gear, which is not good. And then we also came up with the following uh, two-step double reduction gear set. Now the issue with this is that it's very big and we need a compact design. Therefore we came up with the following proposed design. It's just a two-step reduction uh, gear set that will provide us with uh, the input and output values that we need. Also the critical factor in this design is that gear four will uh, withstand the highest stress. Now once we had the, the four gears system selected, we proceeded to calculate the minimum uh, teeth that we needed to, to get the, the ratio right here. Now, the simplest way to do this is to have the two reduction ratios to be the same, which turned out to be five, uh, one to five. And after this, we calculated that the minimum pinion teeth for the first reduction will be 15. After some iterations, then we came up with the following values. For the first reduction, we have 15 and 75 teeth, and for the second one, we have 12 and 60. After this, then, we selected the, the gears. We used the KHK catalogs, which followed JIS standards. We used their allow torque reference, and then we picked the gears, and then we tested the AGMA uh, equations to see how they rated this uh, gear set. Now, the safety factors are, were pretty high for the AGMA procedures, which mean that the gears are safe. However, you can see that the contact where it's just about right. Also, another important thing is that JIS rates the steel used as N8, which equates to a quality precision factor of nine, which we need. Here's the second set of gears. Now we can see for gear four, we have the lowest uh, safety factor, which is still pretty high, but as I said before, it experiences the greatest stress. Next, Isa will talk about the gear, uh, bearing selection. Now the next step is to select bearings. Now when doing this, we have to understand that there's two bearings on each of the shafts. In our system, there's three shafts that are being placed. Um, for shafts one and three in particular, there's equivalent bearings on their respective shafts. This is due to the fact that there's only one load being placed on each of those shafts. Now for shaft two, it's noted that there's a change in bearings due to the fact that gear four has the highest force or stress that's being placed on it. So that must be considered when getting bearings. 
Now for selecting shafts, we use von Mises stress analysis in order to pick our material. So we look and we, we focus primarily on shaft two because it has gear four on it, so it has the highest stress that's being placed. So after finding the moment, we get a von Mises stress of about 329 megapascals. So we then choose steel 1045 because it has a yield, st uh, yield strength of 570 megapascals. So this gives us a factor of safety of 1.73. And because this is able to hand withstand this stress, it can be used on the other shafts. Our cost analysis came out to be, our total cost was a little over $1,600. The most notable price is the aluminum casing. This was $1,200 and most of this was due to the fact that it was custom and it's taking into account most of the labor. To conclude, the system regenerated is safe to transmit four horsepower throughout the system. The overall cost is a little over $1,600. Um, the offset is about two inches and it can be applied to things such as food conveyors or even uh, airport luggage systems.